I'm Allie, and I was a Write Me Allograph recipient on May 29th last year. And first, I want to start off saying thank you to everyone. Um, it's a crazy story. It really is. So uh, thank you, everyone, for having me here. Thank you, Christopher, for organizing everything. Jim and Dan for giving me this amazing opportunity to come and share it with all of you. Ashley, thank you for all of your kind words and uh, responses to my letters. Um, it was really, really great to talk to someone after surgery and have a response from the company. So this was definitely a unique experience that presented many challenges and helped me become stronger as a person. And with me is my husband. So uh, growing up, I was never coordinated and certainly not very active. And food was always a struggle. So eventually the weight ended up piling on. And this picture is of me at my heaviest in 2012. With the support of Parker, my family, coworkers, and my best friends, I tried to do something active in my life every day, whether it was going out on the water kayaking, or as you can see, I ended up doing more color runs. Um, it's a lot of fun. And so I would go out with uh, my friends and Parker. So then in March, Parker proposed and we set the date for September 12th of 2015. So I spent the next year after we got engaged, increasing activity through running and a new hobby. We loved scuba diving. It was important to build my strength in cardio so that when we went diving, we were ready for our certification. Pound by pound, the weight started to slip off. I began actually enjoying running and I signed up for more 5Ks. During this time, I was employed at a school that required physical interventions to keep students and staff safe. This required staff to be mobile through bending, squatting, kneeling, and running for extended periods of time. I knew I wanted to be more fit for my personal life and for my job as well. So in April of 2015, it was a big blow when I woke up and fell on the floor from pain in my right leg. I spent the day icing it, figuring that maybe I had hurt it during one of my workouts, but the next day there was no improvement and my knee had swollen two to three times its normal size. I couldn't straighten it and I ended up having to call out of work and calling my PCP. A few days after my MRI, I received a call from a PA reading me the results. He informed me I had a condition that would prevent me from doing all of my outdoor hobbies and that I should not be walking on my leg, and this was all caused by a piece of bone that was hanging off of my femur. When I went in for the appointment, it did not go in any way that I had hoped. The doctor agreed with the PA and informed me that he would have to do surgery, which would involve nailing the bone back into place, a temporary fix for what would eventually be a knee transplant. Although I was distraught with the lack of information and the answers that I had, I refused to let my crutches impede my, my everyday life. So I went out with my friends and I crutched my way across the UMaine Orono campus for my brother's graduation. I was in contact with Brigham and Women's Hospital, but they didn't have any consultations until August. Please, I would plead. I'm getting married in September. Nothing, no openings. I tried Boston Sports and Shoulder Center with the same plea and they had an opening the last week of April. And after waiting for Dr. Wetzel to review my MRI and x-rays, he came to talk to us. Surgery was the decision, six to eight weeks of non-weight bearing post-op and non-weight bearing until surgery. And if this wasn't enough, I had the condition in both knees. He then explained the plan of action for surgery would be that he would have to drill a marble-sized amount of bone out of my femur and insert a graft into the bone. Before this could happen, I needed a donor. Usually doctors would remove the needed cartilage from the other knee, but since I had the condition in both knees, he wouldn't be able to do this. So I had to wait until I had a donor. Less than five months out from the wedding with an unknown surgery date, six to eight weeks, weeks of non-weight bearing, and then whatever time it took to recuperate after. What she hasn't said yet, I heard my mom say, is she's getting married in September. Dr. Wesley said, all right, change of plans. So around the end of the first week in May, Dr. Weitzel called. They had a graft, but it didn't pass all the tests it needed to. 
Dr. Weitzel told me he had shared my story with the company they worked with and that I had been moved to the top of the donor list in hopes of having me ready for the wedding. With renewed hope, I went back to waiting and doubted that surgery would happen in time. But then I got the call mid-May. They had a graft, surgery was set for May 29th, and I spread the good news with my parents, Parker and his mom. Once I was with it enough, I happily wrote a letter to JRF and participated in the thank you program. To me, no amount of thank yous could ever, ever express my gratitude for not only helping me get ready for September, but returning to a normal life. So here are some pictures Dr. Weitzel gave me from during my surgery. And um, the final one at the bottom has my plug in my femur. So PT, careful balancing, determination, and wedding planning is what got me through the months of June and July. I had a few appointments with Dr. Weitzel, and every time it was good news. Things were healing well, and I cleared, was cleared to start using my leg at the six-week mark, mid-July. I was known in PT as the girl with the shoes. Just like many other girls out there, I had imagined all my life what my wedding would be like. I wanted the father-daughter dance. I wanted my first dance with my husband. And most importantly, I wanted to walk down that aisle on my own two feet. So lots of new things. Between all these changes, recovery and wedding planning, my head was spinning by August. Parker and I had bought my childhood home and our wedding was coming up fast. Before I knew it, it was the rehearsal dinner. I brought my shoes down to where we were getting married and I proudly put them on. I practiced walking and surprised everyone that I could do it. So the ceremony was beautiful and everything that I had hoped for. Dad walked me down the aisle and the feeling of pride and joy that I actually walked down without a cane or any crutches was indescribable. I was surrounded by my friends and family, Parker and our wedding party. The ceremony took about half an hour. I said I do to my best friend and we went on to the reception. I ditched my heels for the party so I wouldn't regret it too much in the morning. My mom had bought me beautiful sandals to wear under my dress. It was finally time for all of the dancing. We swirled around the floor and then dad and I glided through our dance. The entire time I couldn't stop thinking about how grateful I was that surgery happened in time and that my body was healing so quickly. No matter how many times I say thank you, it's never gonna be enough. So um, finally I received a letter from my donor family. This is Darcy, my donor. The letter was from her mother telling me that Darcy's 25th birthday would have been September 12th, 2015. Um, that she was identified with a learning disability and that she would have been so proud to know that her donation was going to a special education teacher. Um, there were a lot of coincidences in her letter, starting with Parker and I were 25 when we got married and um, her 25th birthday would have been the day that we got married. Uh, I shared the letter with my mother-in-law, Parker, and my parents. Um, to add to the meant to be, it had to happen kind of feeling, my mom had told me that before I was born, she had been debating between naming me Darcy or Elizabeth. So at the end of the school year, I went on a field trip with my class that I work with, and it took us on a two mile loop up a steep hill with many stairs. It was one of the first big trips that I took with my knee, and it was amazing to be able to do it. I want to be more active and return back to the lifestyle that I, was, I had before. Um, and today I'm doing almost everything I want. I can hike, walk, climb, and I'm scampering after our new puppy. And I had my last follow-up on June 2nd, and it was only good news. So these are the x-rays from 2015, and then these are the x-rays I had in June. My knee has healed wonderfully, and I don't need to go back for any follow-ups for it. Um, my left knee has not gotten worse over the past year, so we've decided if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have been cleared for everything except skydiving and bungee jumping. <laughs> I am so unbelievably thankful to everyone for all of the behind the scenes work that goes into not just my story, but for everyone else that goes through something crazy like this. So thank you.